1963 Chrysler Turbine Car by Johan. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, What's in the Box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody and welcome back to another great Monster Hobbies oh, What's in the Box video where today we are looking at a very strange, very rare Chrysler Turbine from 1963. Now this car was a special idea that Chrysler had to make a turbine engine, which of course only uses one spark plug and is meant to recycle gas and exhaust. It's a really bizarre engine and a really cool model kit. So today we want to open the lid on this old classic. But before we do that, let's not forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends. Pound that notification bell so that whenever I open up another model kit, you are the first to know about it. And without further ado, let's put the transmission into drive and go down and see what's in the box. The 60s was a rocket age in a really cool era of experimentation and nothing could be more experimental than the Chrysler turbine car. Now this is a special entry by Joe Han. I do have a few of these left in my collection. They were a great model kit manufacturer owned by OK Spalding now. Now they're owned by OK Spalding, but before they were owned by Seville Enterprises and there was a lot of kits being put out. Prior to Seville, they were their own company and they made the offshoot cars that AMT, Ravel, Monogram, those other guys did not cover. Like the turbine car, hearses, other Chryslers, you name it. Really cool stuff. I wish I got more of them back in the day, but they are now defunct. And Oki Spalding has only produced the 59 Rambler, which of course I have done a review on. So this is a long box, as you can tell. They have some really cool... Um, artwork here, the old pencil sketch type. You get white wall tires, super detailed turbine engine, opening doors, steering wheels, steerable wheels, so they go left and right, fold down seats, opening hood, super detailed underbody, opening trunk, and super detailed interior. Made in the USA. <laughs> With pride, I imagine. Uh, no, I'm up here in Canada. Anyway, so um, the side of the box looks like the top of the box, and then when we turn over here, we get some really cool stuff, and <gasps> dun dun dun, the exclusive frame pack. These things are, it was a really good idea by Johan because none of the parts touch each other, so they didn't need a plastic bag in there, you know, to protect your glass or whatever. But it's bad on the end that they have all these little pins and every little part tree fits on a pin, and as soon as you open this thing up, dun dun dun, you miss up the parts and nothing fits ever again. But anyway, it says exclusive frame pack. No rubbing or scratching of parts. Every part securely locked in frames. Every frame held in position. No breakage. Parts evenly distributed. Part easy location of all parts. All parts numbered. Virtually tamper proof. Although they didn't list what order this thing goes back together in. So, yeah, that was a fail. But anyway. Opening hood, opening trunk, which is rare on most model kits. Okay, so now here's a write-up on this. Chrysler turbine car. Vibration-free power from a lightweight, simple, compact engine has long been the dream of automotive designers. Today this dream has come true through the new revolutionary Chrysler Corporation turbine car. Designed exclusively for its turbine engine, the four-passenger, two-door hardtop has exterior styling emphasizing the turbine turbine, turbine, uh, theme, pardon me, turbine theme. The power plant is similar to a pint-sized aircraft engine, aircraft jet engine. Compressed air is heated by the burning fuel in the combustion chamber where hot gases expand to drive the turbines, delivering power to the wheels of the car. The turbine engine contains 80% fewer parts than a comparable piston engine, is smaller in size and lighter in weight. It requires no radiator or liquid cooling system. The electrical system uses a storage battery, starting generator, coil, and one, count on one, spark plug. So let's take a look at this very cool model kit. By first looking at the very cool instruction sheets. 
So I will move all this out of the way and let's crank the camera all the way back. So here I said bought at Eagles Games in Bellingham. I was on a road trip for $10.25 in the USA, October 6, 1993. Then I have C Scale Auto Enthusiast, February 1993, page 40 and 41. Sad part is that got washed away in the 2013 High River Flood in Alberta. It was in my basement and fell into the mud. Okay, so here is the engine assembly. Now here it's got like cement, the hydraulic oil pump, the power housing, cement, this, cement, that. That's a very uh, Johan type thing to do. But anyway, as you can see, it's quite different from a V8, that's for sure. It's sort of like a stove boiler for a school or something. And now here they tell you the operation of the turbine. So you get this impeller in the air intake. Air comes in, goes around, spins these big propeller things, spins that other thing, comes out to your drive shaft. And your spark plug is burning in this burner. So this is pretty cool. I could read all this, but holy smokes, look at that fine print. Okay, so moving along, look at this undercarriage. This is one of, Johan was a really interesting model company because some kits were just remarkable and other kits were blah. Anyway, this is one of those just remarkable kits, so if you can find it, go for it. The opposable steering, it's got a brake back and front with a little pin, then the wheels glue on the brake. Um, very dark on the photocopying here, but anyway, your differential goes all together. Really cool. There's your interior assembly, the fold-down seats. Um, tells you here how they go. They, they link on a big bar. Then, of course, you got your du dual batteries, your spare tire cover, and all the rest go into the back in the trunk. And look at the gear shift lever here is very, or not the lever, the column is very long on this big, cool looking chrome thing. Then they've got your painting suggestions. If desired for added re realism, paint the following parts. And it lists them all. And it looks like I've, I've listed them in here. Okay, so there's the body going together. But I know some people have had trouble putting these together just because of how many how many separate pieces. I mean, under the hood you actually get the uh, the reinforcing beams. <laughs> I mean, it is detailed. The interior is sort of a bucket there that plops on for your back panels. And then we're getting into our frame here. These big monstrous flat looking weird things, those are the exhausts for the turbine engine. Of course, you got your fuel tank and your subframe in the back. And then there's all the rest of the body going together. You're opening doors and they have separate fenders that go on. So you're really building a car with this kit. You're not just kind of assembling, you know, plastic one molded body. You're building the car <laughs> the, the real way Chrysler would have built it. And I do believe these bodies were from Pinafari down in Italy. May be wrong, you guys can check that out for yourself. But uh, yeah, definitely Italian built. So let's close this back up again and look at the actual plastic parts. So the first thing we're gonna look at in our Chrysler turbine kit is the actual body here. And as you can see, this is like a real car. If you, if you were out and saw this on blocks in the junkyard, they would look exactly like this. Well, maybe with the exception of the hinges sticking out in mid outer space, but anyway, you can see there's quite a lot of flash here on the Johan kit down below. Uh, there's the hole for the opening trunk. There's the hood. The fenders are going to glue along here in the front. So it is quite a unique way of building a car body, but then for everything it needs to do, I mean, this is really the only way you can build it. Oops. So there you go. There is quite a lot of flash inside here. So I don't think the camera's picking that up too well. Yeah, there's a line there. So you'll have to, again, let's scrape those down with your number 16 hobby blade. Interesting, if you look at how all the lines and stuff are in here, that means that they had the mold kind of cut in this funny way. But there's like a panel that goes there, a panel that goes there, a T in the middle. All kinds of weird things. 
So yeah, quite an intricate type of body and a really weird way to mold something. But then again, I mean, this is how they decided to work this car out. So it is really cool. There is a texture on the roof for your vinyl top. So that's authentic. You can even see like they attempted to make the striker plate for the door so that when the door closes it actually pins in there, which is really a nice detail. And then right in here, I know this is a white body, it's hard to see, but there of course is the scripting for the car as well as the gas fuel pipe. Ah, there are fender skirts molded into the body here, which are quite light, but still quite good. And uh, what else can we tell you? There it is. So next up we have the interior tub here. It's not quite a full-out bucket like in some of the AMT kits, but it does have a little bit of a sidewall here. This would be the trunk area. And then you've got these big mold marks here that would have to be scraped down with your number 16 hobby blade. The rear seat is going to fit in here and sort of roll back this way. This big sunken part is for the shifter column. Um, uh, there's the seat mounts. And not too much going on up on this zone. Then as you turn it over, you can see a couple of the ribs and things molded in underneath, which give it that extra detail through the frame rails. And there is a texture on here. So very nicely done for the era. All right, so now we get into some pretty large parts trees. And you notice areas in here where it's kind of blank. This is because the part trees stack on top of each other. They have these little pins up in here, the four corners, which go into corresponding holes on some of the other sprue trees. All right, so there's a trunk lid for your Chrysler turbine car. There are some little parts molded in here. These are coil springs and they're actually hollow, which is really nice. There's all the front A-arm suspension pieces and the subframe to hold all those pieces in place. This of course is the rear part of the frame, uh, the gas tank, steering wheel. These are some of the components for the turbine engine. There's some more frame rail bits, more turbine parts. Uh, the differential and the rear leaf springs for it, the covers, the shock absorbers, the twin batteries, drive shaft, part of the seats, the wheel backs, and of course there is a lot of flash on this. Johan was sort of notorious for flash in the later years, the Seville years. This is the ribs for the trunk underneath and they actually have hinge points molded on so be careful when you cut these out and Make sure you clean them up so they will function properly. And yeah, so this is our first parts tree. All right, now take a look at how this parts tree is. So we've got these really long pins up here so that the uh, sprue trees interlock. But anyway, here's the front fenders and you know, they've got the chrome trim up in here and these are actually opened up like vents and the chrome trim will pop in between them. There's the inner door panels. There are, is some uh, detail on them. There's the front doors, the bottoms of the seats. These big long things are the turbine exhaust pipes. Look at the dashboard. It's even got holes in there for the instrument cluster to pop through on the back. There's our elongated, uh, now I believe this is the radiator, top of the radiator. There's the front seats, a couple of vents, uh, and some more components. Another great big massive parts tree for sure. And now here's our final white part tree. There's not very many part trees in the color, but there's the engine block for the turbine up there. Here's our hood. These again are the exhaust pipes. There's a top and bottom. There's your uh, wheels here the brake drums and whatnot. There's the seat and it's got a hinge on here so that the seat can fold up and down. There's the rear seat and the backing panel. And then here we've got parts of the shifter column and whatnot. And uh, the, these are sitting on that drive shaft tunnel. That's what I was trying to say earlier. 
And there's our spare tire up there. And now if you flip this around, you can better see the rib detail underneath the hood here, although it is kind of soft. There are some mold marks there you have to scrape off. And then there's the seat, the back here, and the back of the rear package shelf. So now we get into one of the better parts of the entire kit. This, of course, is our chrome tree. And here we have our rear bumper. There's a Chrysler license plate with the pentagram molded in here. Uh, then there's our rear bumper. These nice rocket type ends for the rear tail lights. Of course, a lot of this is our turbine engine components, like that top of the fan thing and these intakes, side covers. There's our hubcaps and wheels, the inner ring for the steering wheel. Uh, I think these are part of the instrument panel. Um, there's the column shift for the transmission tunnel and a whole bunch of goodies. So now we get into our windshields and if you notice there's a little dot there and that's where the rear view mirror glues on. There's our front windshield and our rear window, the two no draft glass windows, the headlights and then these two little strange clear plastic bits. I think they might be parking lights or something. And then here we have our elongated tail lights. So I do believe that... The oh, of course. Huh. I had that completely wrong on the chrome tree. Okay, so these are the rear tail lights, which go into our rear bumper here. And this is the front bumper. These are the tail lights there. I think I'm kind of used to looking at a 62 Thunderbird from Ford, and they have the bullets coming out here. This would be the rear bumper if it was a 62 T-Bird. Aha, and then those would be the turn signal lamp covers. Or, so that's what these would be here and here. So now we have some really interesting tires here. These are uh, Goodyear power cushion seats, and I had to really look to figure this out because that's that's the lettering that says power cushion up there. They have white walls stamped on them. Johan was kind of cool that way. They in some of the uh, 1970 Oldsmobiles they'd have red red walls stamped into the tires so that was always cool on them and uh, they do have quite a nice scale style tread pattern on them so again these are nice wheels or tires I should say but the problem is they only fit Johan wheels so you can't use these on AMTs or anything else without widening the hole in here and oof, that that's risky business and now as a final note, this is how the Johan plastic stacking system worked. And as you can tell here, the parts don't really touch each other. They're all stuck into the little pins on the ends of the sprues like I was showing you through the video. And this was their way to uh, keep parts from touching each other so you didn't need plastic bags. And that completes our review of the Johan 1963 Chrysler Corporation turbine car. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great review that I did of my own personal copy of the 1963 Chrysler turbine car by Johan. And wasn't that a really cool, well-detailed, awesome, amazing model kit? So if you're out there in eBay land or garage sales or model car shows, and you come across one of these great babies. Remember, you saw it here first. Why did you see it here first? Because, of course, you were a very good YouTube viewer and you liked, subscribed, and shared this video with all your friends and family. And you remember to pound uh, that notification bell so that when I opened up a brand new kit, you were the first one to see it. So until next time, happy model building.